it's Pupmeister, and today oh, we've got people falling from the sky. Um, today we are going to be looking at the top three ways to escape the nether. And we're going to start at number three and work our way to number one. Number two and number one basically solve the problem of anything. Um, although there's some strings attached to number two. But we're going to start with number three. And as you can see behind me there, number three is all about you still have your portal here, but for whatever reason, it was unlit. Now, usually that happens because of a ghast hitting it and basically destroying the portal and you've got to relight it. Um, I have seen lava, like a, a full lava flow go through it, do the same. Um, but probably it's a gas, but you never know. There's, there's things that can happen. So let's start with number three, the different methods you can use to relight your portal. So before we get into things, let's just go over what you might have in your inventory. Now, when I go exploring, I always have my bow and arrows. I have a bed in case I have to sleep somewhere. I have a bucket filled with water for climbing or if you fall, that kind of thing. Um, in my case, I have a shulker box and an ender chest. Uh, for extra storage. I do have usually some cobblestone if I need to build something. I've got torches, I've got planks, sticks, and coal so I can make more torches if I need them. So if you have this stuff, you're pretty good as far as being as prepared as you can be without carrying a ton of stuff. So the first thing that you could do for relighting your nether portal here is you could explore. So if you can find a nether fortress in the chests that are in the hallways of the nether fortress, you can find iron nuggets and potentially even a flint and steel. I mean, if you find one of those, then you can just come back and light it, no problem. Um, but if you just find the iron nuggets, hopefully you'll find enough to at least make one iron ingot. Once you have enough for one iron ingot from the nether fortress, all you have to do is look for gravel. Because, of course, as you know, if you break gravel you could get some flint. And then once you have one iron and one flint, there you have your flint and steel, and you can light this up. Now, the second thing I um, am going to suggest that you could do, and these are all suggestions. Some are easier than others. They're in no particular order. Um, but kill a wither skeleton. That will give you coal. And if you kill a blaze as well while you are there, that gives you a blaze rod. And then the last thing you need to kill is a ghast. And that can potentially give you gunpowder. And then once you have a blaze rod, coal, and gunpowder, you can create a fire charge. And it actually gives you three fire charges and you can literally take your fire charge and right click on your portal and it will light it up so that is another way you can relight your portal the other way of course is using your bed i mean everybody knows it explodes so just kind of put it right there Man, I'm going to have to fix this all up, I bet you, when I'm done here. And then you want probably to put something down just so you don't get too hit. And then just try to lay in it. Whoops. Not place a block. No, you don't want to place a block. 
you want to try to lay in it. There we go. And as you can see, it lights your portal. It also completely <laughs> destroys all the land around here. And so I knew I was going to have to fix this up. But if you carry a bed, and most people do, and if you don't, I would highly recommend doing it because, you know, if you need to sleep to get rid of all the mobs at night, if you're in the overworld, um, it's worth having. And then if you, of course, have a problem like this, well, a bed just got you out of the nether. Okay, now that I have fixed all this up from the explosion, um, one of the other things you can do to get this lit again, if you're near, if you happen to be near a fortress, a blaze that shoots at you could potentially relight the portal. If you stand, you know, right where it might be aiming, if it hits the fire in here, it could restart it. And then, of course, a ghast can also do the same. Um, it can kind of get rid of it on you, but it can also put it back. So you can get a ghast to aim at you and relight this. Now, if you're really good, <laughs> you can actually redirect the fireball that the ghast is shooting at you. Okay, there's a ghast way over there. I don't think he sees me. He does. Okay, so... Oh, I missed. Like I said, you have to be... You have to be good, and you have to be able to time it right. And as you can see, I'm not really good at either of those things. There you go. See, you can hit it with your sword. You can hit it back with your sword um, or with a bow. And what I'm trying to say is, there you go. See, if, if uh, you can hit it with your arrow, the angle at which you're standing is where the fireball will go. If you stand, say, over here, and he shoots at you, and you're aiming over here, you could direct his fireball into the portal to relight it. So I just thought I would let you know about that as well. Now, if you have a diamond pickaxe with you, you could potentially move your portal closer to another fortress where a blaze could light it for you. Um, the other thing is you can basically get this lit by putting any kind of wood nearby and then pour lava in here. So if you have some wood, which I do recommend you carry some wood, but if you if uh, if you do, then you can do this. It'll also work um, with basically any other kind of wood, like chests, fences, gates, trap doors, any kind of wood. And then also things like wool, of course. If you have any flowers and stuff <laughs> that could potentially work as well and then what you need to do if you have a bucket and again if you don't you might be able to find enough iron in another fortress to get a bucket three iron ingots and then you just need to come on over grab some lava with your bucket and then pour it under here. And then eventually these blocks should light up. And there you go. And once they do, your portal is lit. Just like that.
Now, if for some reason you don't have a bucket, you're going to have to rely on your ingenuity a little more. Um, in this particular case, I don't see any lava up above, like it's all right here. Now, how many blocks is this? One, two, three, four, five. So, in a situation like this, where the lava is that far away and much lower, you only have a couple options. Either move your portal to the lava, <laughs> so it's not so far away, and the height difference is not so big. Or, if it's only one or two blocks in height difference, if you can build a trench and bring it the lava to the portal then you should be fine but when it's this far and this much of a height difference you're better off to look for a lava source up above somewhere so just for fun and for a test I'm going to see if I can use a stair step of wood from this kind of length um, from the lava and the difference in height to see if I can actually light the portal. And I'll let you know how it turns out. So while we wait for the wood to potentially catch on fire and do a stair step like that, and this is, this is research here because I really don't know whether that's gonna work. The better way is to look for lava above it that could potentially stream downwards. And I do see, and you're gonna be in my way, so let's get rid of you. I do see lava over here. I don't know how far it is. Oh, there's lava right there. That's even closer. So one of the things you want to do is look for lava that you can direct towards your portal. Oh, look at y'all down there. Okay, so where was this lava? Okay, so it's over here. Um, what level is this? 55. So let's go to this other side. And we where's, where would this drop? Okay, so I'm going to have to seal up that hole. Um, maybe we can drop it a little over, actually. Okay, so where are we here? 50, 58. So we still have to kind of dig. Ah! I wasn't quite prepared for it to be there already. <laughs> okay. So that was a little bit of a mistake there. Let's eat some food. Okay, well, so we know there's lava right there. And we can have it flow downwards. Oh, oh, look at that. We don't even have to go there. See, there's lava everywhere. There's like literally lava everywhere in the nether. So in theory, you should be able to find something that you can pour out. Okay, and this is where I don't, I don't, to be honest, I'm having my doubts about that uh, wooden stair step fire brigade there. So let's channel this. Okay, so this is what we're going to do now. And we just want to make our way back. So there you go. So the bottom wooden pieces did indeed catch on fire 
but it's just not enough to continue the fire upwards. But it, it could be kind of right there. And then we can just channel it. You know, let's uh, let's do that. Is that, where is that going to be? Ooh, that might, it might actually fall on the other side. So let's just kind of make a channel like this. And then channel it this way. And we can just put the wood right there. And I think this will work a lot better than this stairway because uh, that's not happening. But like you saw, if you just had maybe one or two levels, then it would work. So it all depends how far down the lava is. And let's just get rid of it. Whoops, in case we fall down. <laughs> it's like I knew I was going to fall down. Check that out. Okay. All right, and then just do that, and that, and that, and there we go. It never happened. Okay, so I'm going to let it flow, and then we'll see where it lands. Okay. So it's flowing. Oh my, I've created a monster. Check that out. Okay, well the good news is... The good news is it reached our piece of wood. So in theory... It should just be a matter of time until this wood goes up. And if we wanted to really make sure, we could also do something like this and put another piece of wood here and maybe even dig out underneath so that the lava can go under and then it should light any time. So one other, th there you go, there it goes, right there. And if you want to make sure it's this side that catches fire, you can always kind of cover it on the other sides as well so that you know it's going to be this side that catches fire because that's what you want. It's this side that's going to activate your portal for you. Okay, so there, there's a good lesson. So if you don't have a bucket, and man, carry a bucket with you is all I have to say. But if you don't have a bucket for some reason, look for lava sources above you that can stream down and light some wood or wool or whatever you have um, to your portal. And one of the other things you can do is just look for blocks with dripping lava coming out of the bottom. That will also tell you that there is a lava source there. Okay, so let's go into number two. Number two can help you no matter where you are, but it has strings attached. And what do I mean by that? Well, you're going to have to make a chest. So if you have a chest on you, great. If not, you're gonna have to make one. Um, so you're gonna need four for the crafting table and then eight, so 12 oak planks or 12 planks in total to get your chest. If you don't have any wood with you, you're going to have to go to either the warped forest or crimson forest like you see over there. That wood works just as well to make a chest. And then what you need to do 
And this is one of the things you can do when you're lost in the overworld as well. Is grab your chest. Put it down. Put all your stuff in it. So that everything you've got is in here and protected. Write down your coordinates. So hit F3. See where you are in the ne in the nether. Here, minus 276, 36, and 188. So write that down so you know where your chest is. And then you just basically have to go swimming in the lava. <laughs> go, for, go for a hot dip. In other words, you have to kill yourself uh, in any way you wish. And then you will show up either at your spawn point if you do not have a bed location or if you do have a bed location it'll take you back there and if you have no idea where your spawn point is and you're going to be completely lost at that point please make sure you check out the video at the end of this um, video showing how never to get lost again okay as far as the overworld is concerned so if you do die and you go back to your spawn point you'll be able to find your base immediately no problem okay so that is option two of the three best ways to escape the nether now the number one way to escape the nether as far as I'm concerned because no matter what your situation let's say you don't even have a nether portal there is no nether portal you're just lost you're you're who knows where you are um, and you need to get back into the overworld now of course you might be lost in the overworld um, but at least you'll get out of the nether um, if you're just you know somewhere and this is how number one works. Okay, step one of the best way to get out, or at least number one, is you need to find gold. So mine as much gold as you can possibly get your hands on. And I've said this before and I'll say it a thousand times again. One of the very first enchantments you should do in the game is Fortune 3 on your pickaxe. Because it will help you get so much more. Look at that. I already have a stack. Over a stack. Fortune 3 is your friend. Got to be a little careful. Oops. <laughs> like I said, got to be a little careful. Ah, so close to the lava. All right. Forget that, man. Let's put some more bricks down. All right, that should be a little better. I'm sure I can find more gold, and I think I just did over here. Nice. Just keep looking. Get as much as you can find. So the nether wastes are probably your best bet to find lots of gold. Um, I just keep finding it. It's been, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes? 15 minutes at the most of just going around searching for gold. And I've got like over 10 stacks here already. So 10 stacks? should be plenty. So, now that we have all the 
gold um, nuggets that we could use, you're going to need a crafting table. And you're going to want to turn them into gold ingots. So basically, a stack of nuggets will give you seven of the gold ingots. So when all is said and done, I've got almost a stack and a half of gold ingots. So the very first thing you want to do is make some boots or a helmet or whatever you prefer and put on some gold boots so that the piglins will not attack you. So now you actually want to seek out some piglins. So there's one right there. So just get your gold and they're afraid of zombie piglins. So come on, grab your gold. And then you basically want to just keep on trading. Trade, 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 trade. Because trading with piglins can give you obsidian. So if you can get 10 obsidian, there's a portal for you. And of course, I think he just gave us, yep, a fire charge. So there's how to light the portal. And we just have to keep trading, basically, until we get 10 obsidian. And I think we just got another one. Yep. I lucked out here and found a group of three <laughs> piglins that all just keep trading with me. So it's speeding up the process dramatically. But it all depends on your luck. I mean... You might get 10 obsidian real quick, and you might get 10 obsidian after having to get even more gold. And in my case, I had to get even more gold. So in my case, it took me <laughs> about two and a half stacks of gold ingots to get my 10 obsidian. So now I can make a portal, I have fire charges, I can light it. I even, if I wanted to, I even have iron nuggets. So I could make an iron ingot, and then I've got lots of gravel, so I could shovel that until I find a flint, and then I could even have a flint and steel. But why go through that if you have fire charges? So just to show you with a fire charge, I've got one in my hand. Just right click on the wall like that and it will turn it on for you. Now, just before we end the episode, because I've basically given you now the top three ways in order to escape the nether. I'm going to show you a few methods not to get lost. So this is kind of, I guess, a bonus section. <laughs> um, as you're traveling, you can either leave torches every once in a while, which is kind of what I do. Um, and I leave them just till, you know, you can't, till, till you can see the next one kind of thing. And then you can keep exploring or whatever and keep moving. And you just you just kind of go until, you know, here, I guess I'll put it there. This is not a good position since I wasn't really going anywhere. <laughs> but if I was going this way, you know, I can see the torch there. And so I could keep traveling and keep moving etc etc and then i would just follow the torches so here's one Ooh, i almost landed in the lava there and then there's one and then of course you can 
Um, probably, I mean, you could use netherrack because there's so much of it in the nether. But if you had cobblestone, and you can do this with netherrack as well, you can put it down and you can put, say, on one side the torch. So the torch could be where you are um, either going to your portal or going away from your portal. Um, I would prefer it going away from your portal, and I'll tell you why, because you can use it to see where you need to go, right? So as long as you're facing the torch, you know you are on your way to your portal. And if you come across it like this, like if you explore over here or something and you come back and you're not sure which way to go, well, you know if you're facing this way, you're facing the wrong way. You're facing this way, you're facing the right way. Um, or whatever, you know, whichever direction you so desire. Um, another way is you could basically make a little um, arrow or something. So you could put three in a row like this and then one out in the direction that you need to go. Now, in our, in our case, the direction is this way. So you could put a bunch of these down and then that will also tell you which way you need to go. Of course, you can make a lodestone, but they can be pretty expensive. But if you place the lodestone right next to your portal where you need to go, and then you have a compass for the lodestone, it'll show you the direction you need to go. But like I said, it's pretty expensive, especially in survival where you have to get it all yourself. So a lot of people don't have lodestones. And in fact, I don't even have a lodestone. But there is a, a few hints to not get lost while you're searching in the nether and how to find a way to light your portal or even make one when it comes down to bartering with the piglins. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you now have a way to get out of the nether and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you soon bye for now oh and there's even a way to support the channel now in the description